Hello and welcome to part two of this Can You Flip a Car for Huge Profit. We have this 2007 Chevrolet AVL um, 1.2 four cylinder and we're going to do the clutch. Now there's a few things we need to think because we're doing it on the floor. What we're going to do first is we're going to try and strip as much as we can without having to jack it up so we can take batteries out remove the fuse box it looks like we're having the fuse box to the side you know undo the bolts undo some of the crankshaft sensors um you know gear uh, the, the the gear linkages we can undo them you know a few whatever whatever we need to move at the top this is also this is the old style of a clutch so it's it's cable driven clutch you can just see it down there where my finger is um it's not a hydraulic clutch and when the clutch is going, if you're going to buy a car, I'm going to show you a little trick some people do to kind of disguise that the clutch is going um, and it might catch you out. Right, so as you come under here, then pedals look kind of level, but when I come to the side, you can just see how much this pedal has been actually moved up. That pedal should be about there for it to be level with all the others. And as you can see, it's all the way up here. So if you come into a car and you see the pedal is a lot higher than all the others, it normally does indicate that it's a um, it's a clutch cable that has been adjusted to get the clutch to actually bite more. And it's a really good indication that the clutch is gone or going. Right, if you're going to be doing a job like this, just get everything ready before you start. So get your toolbox, your tool cart, whatever it is you're going to be using. Get it kind of close. Try and get it as well organized as you can. So as you take bits off, you can keep everything together so you're not going to really get confused on where bits go and stuff like that. Ah, the dog can see the rabbit now you do have to be careful on newer cars you can't just take the battery out there is procedures to to keep you know memory save all the codes and you know stuff like that memories <clears throat> but with this one there's nothing really there it's going to be okay but now we can actually see the gearbox mount there not going to really be able to move this completely out of the way but we're going to be able to get it out of the way enough to actually undo the mount so what i'm going to do now is just start taking off some of the sensors and uh, not going to be able to film this because you're not going to be able to see. But take off the sensors, take off the gear linkages. You can just see kind of in there. It's going to be awkward to film it once I've got them out. Oh yeah, and these, these connections on here, take all them out. And uh, then we can actually undo a couple of the top bolts. Drain the oil then. Pull out the drive shafts, pull out the box. And Bob's your uncle. The clips on the gearbox, hopefully you can just see that. I've just put the screwdriver in the middle of it and i'll try and get it up on camera there we go they're just like a she-shaped clip and uh or c-shape even and now that will allow that to come out of there once i've removed the pin that is just here there keep everything together a little washer. Come on. Now this should slide out. Should do, but it's not. Because I'm doing it on camera, it never will. The gear linkages, as you can see. You can see one of the gearbox bolts there, another one there and one more down there. We've moved obviously all the sensors as well and screwed the screws back in, or the bolts back in, sorry, because it's just easier then you can't kind of lose them. Same with the connections here, I've moved the whole bracket and screwed it back in there so we can't lose it. So I can undo that bolt, this one and that one. I'm gonna have to do the rest from underneath, but then once I've undone them three bolts and we're gonna jack it up, we're gonna drain the gearbox oil no point showing that, it's just draining gearbox oil and then we will uh, pull out the drives and continue. Right, we've managed to be able to get the three off, the 14mm, so the two at the top 
and Sean's just taken off that one there. The starter motor, as you can see, we're going to have to get from underneath. Everything else now we're going to have to get from underneath. So I'm going to um, jack it up in a minute as Sean's doing that. And when you work on the floor, make sure you jack it up correctly. We're going to be using these chocks for the back wheels, like that. And we're going to chuck in the back wheels and we're using axle stands to support it. Which the axle stands are there. So once we've done that, we'll turn the camera back on, whip off the wheels and we'll get cracking. Right, we've two axle stands underneath. We've got a chock just there, as you can see. Now I'm still in my new place. I haven't got any of this sorted yet. We're still missing walls, as you can see. But it is what it is. We've a chock on the front, chock on the back. The handbrake's up. The jack is still in place. Just as an added thing, we're not relying on it though. Then I'm going to put the wheels underneath just in case and then we've got it supported and safe as best we can. And then we can actually go underneath. Well, the next thing we need to do is whip off the wheels, take off the drives. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to screw out the nuts, the, the two nut and bolts here, and then it just pulls out of the gearbox and that's the drive shaft. Same other side, but the other side is shorter. But it's the same principle, you can just see it sticking inside the gearbox there. Then we've got to undo the pendulum mount at the bottom, and then the start mirror and a couple more bolts, and the gearbox is out. Pull it. Okay. 
Jesus Christ! Turn the fucking camera off. That's going to snap. So I'm just going to take out the 17 mil and leave that in place and hopefully it won't be in my way, but it's just awkward. Right, we just got the speedo cable connection. We have another bolt down there for the gearbox. Looks like the two bolts for the gearbox, I think, one of them anyway, is I have to get it on the gearbox side. I can't quite see and I can't even get the can I get it in there? No, there's no room. But I think you get them from the gearbox side. So it's only a couple more bolts. And then this gearbox is out. We go the starter motor is now off very awkward underneath but it's doable um, so now we just got to support the engine take the uh, gearbox mount off and this gearbox is out right engine is now supported through its own eye now what we got to do is release I can kind of release the gearbox mount here and theoretically, you can see the gap that's in the gearbox already. Theoretically, this should come out. All right, so we've got the engine supported with the engine crane or the engine support. We've got the gearbox supported with the jack, as you can see. We're not going to be able to film this. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to stand here, push the gearbox out while Sean releases the gearbox down. Um, and unfortunately, we're not going to have enough hands to actually film that but that's what we're going to do and hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult to get out boom it is off i forgot to take off the dust plate that's why it didn't come off but there we go it's off a look at the damage that's eating into the teeth of the pressure plate what i'm going to do now as you can see just how bad that clutch was it was hitting the rivets on the inside and you know all the lines there is in is just completely gone but we knew that anyway damaged the pressure plate now I've done loads of videos on you know how to line up clutches and all that sort of stuff and I just I'm struggling to find my tools I'm struggling to do anything at the minute so I'm just going to quickly put I'm going to clean all this first so I'm going to get the airline in blow all the dust out blow all the crap out and I'm going to get the clutch back on and once I do that, getting the gearbox lined up, we'll turn the camera back on. Right, it was really easy to get that back in actually. Because the gearbox is so light, it's a petrol gearbox, there's no subframe, there's no nothing in the way. The worst part was, I had to get Sean to hold this pipe out of my way because this pipe, as you can see, you have to use, it's got a bracket on which you use to put onto the mount itself onto the gearbox. You can just see it there, the water pipe. And that got in the way, so... If I was on my own, it would be a nightmare, but because Sean was here, be able to move that out of my way, and I killed the gearbox in. I just lifted it from underneath, and actually, really wasn't a bad thing altogether. So, there's only four bolts actually holding the gearbox on, and then there's two start motor bolts, but the physical bolts for the gearbox is only four, four 14 mils. So, I'm going to screw them back on, and I'm going to put the uh, gearbox mount back on because then I can take this out of the way and it just supports itself a lot easier. Then we'll turn the camera back on. We've got the gearbox in, it's supporting itself. We still haven't got the bottom pendulum mount in, but at least now it's supporting itself. We've got no support anywhere, no support by the jack, no support by anything. I'm gonna do all the gear linkage and everything once I lower the car down, but now I'm just gonna concentrate underneath. So we're gonna get the start motor back. I can't film that because it's just too awkward. Uh, it's just two 12 mil bolts. And then we're going to put the drive shafts in, fill it full of oil. The filler for the oil, you can see, is right there. Look, 
that's to fill up the oil. Obviously then put all the connections back in, um, put the uh, cable back on, check the clutch because with this being a, the old style clutch, the cable could be stretched. We might have to do a bit of adjustment in the clutch before we get it 100% right. It's not going to be self-adjusting like the hydraulic clutches are. And uh, yeah, we'll be good to go then. Well, on now, as you can see, it is more or less oh, in line. You just kind of see it there. Maybe it doesn't look like it, but believe me, it is. Now, I might have to adjust this a few times. Um, and once the clutch starts, you know, wearing, you have to manually adjust it. But you, you do get warning. It feels okay now. I got Sean just to hold it more or less in line, and I just screwed up the little uh, screw. I'll show you underneath in a second. And that's how I'm going to do it until I take my first drive. I might have to adjust it a slight bit more, but we'll see. Um, that's, that's just what you have to do. And after so many miles, it might start slipping, and then you just adjust it again until the pedal is way up here like it was before, and then you have to replace it. Sorted. Right, we're getting some of the connections back on some of the sensors. Uh, I've still got some to do around the back, if I can remember, like the reversing sensor, uh, the speedo, the reversing sensor's in down there, I need to connect that, but I can do that from the top. Just two drive shafts now, and uh, oil, and the battery put back, and that's it. Again, there's no point in me showing you all that, because I've, you know, I've showed you kind of taking them off, and it's the same thing. So we'll get all that done, and then uh, we'll see how this drives. How to fill a gearbox really nice and easy. Now, I'm going to be using the Sealy. Um, um, what did I call it before? Oh, I forgot. Um, needle syringe. syringe. The Sealy syringe. You can get loads of different ones, different sizes, and for different, you know, oils, waters, all sorts of stuff. And all you got to do, you can see we've already taken off the uh, the. The actual fill here, can you see that where the gearbox is? Can you see that on camera? Mm -hmm. You need to say yes, not just no. I can't see you nodding your head when my back's turned to you. You were looking at one another, so you knew I nodded. And all we do is we just squirt it in until it starts coming out of there. Now, you do need to make sure for your gearbox you get the right fluids and stuff. Um, every gearbox is slightly different. But we just keep sucking it out of our tin, putting it in our hole, and squeeze. And we'll do that until we see oil coming out of that. Top filler hole, and we'll put it back on, as you can see. No special tools, no nothing, no ramps, just very simple, on the ground. Take a matter of seconds, I'm not getting destroyed, it's not leaking anywhere. Once it starts coming out, we'll turn the camera back on. Now, you can see that we are level with the gearbox fill plug. Let me just get you in there. You just see the gear oil is level and it's just, it's just trickling out. So that's now full. Very, very simple. As you can see, we've got a rag underneath there. Very, very easy. No mess, no nothing. Suck it out of the container you're using. Just make sure you get the right one for the right fluids. And there you go. So that look people. Nice, easy, sealy tool, and it's cheap as well. What more? Do you so we've got the car back on the deck now. Wheels are on, oil's in, all the connects. All I've got left to do is put the battery in, the ECU, which is part of the battery tray, the fuse box, and that's essentially it. This should then hopefully start and drive. We need to make it start first, because, you know, we've done stuff. We might have forgot something out of it. You don't know yet. Once it starts, will it drive? Time will tell. We've got it all back together and genuinely this is the first time I've even put the key in the ignition. Have I have I missed something? Don't know, but it well it's the ignition comes on. Starts. ABS light is still on, but we know that. Oh it goes into gear. 
We'll just uh, move the chocks underneath the wheel. Right. We'll try first gear. Does it move? <laughs> we will uh, get this on the road properly and uh, we'll see if it actually drives. Like properly, sorted. Just look people, look at the view from my new shed. How beautiful is that? Yeah. Right, first gear. First try, first time. Power! Second gear. Oh yeah. Clutch seems fine at the minute. I, I thought I might have to adjust it, but no. Absolutely fine, going into gear, lovely. There we go, boom, sorted. So look, you can do it. Uh, people say I can't work on the floor, just proven that I can. It is more annoying, it is longer, but hey, you know, this car now should sell for around about 1800, 1500. We're gonna see, I've still got a few little bits to do, sort the mirrors out. Oh, the ABS light's gone out. Why is the ABS light gone out? We've got an ABS issue. Um, Break really hard, you ready? Hold on. Oh, all my stuff in the back. Yeah. So Sean pressed stop record because he's a tit. So anybody look, as always, don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty and see you in the next one. So it's